This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Delmarva Dental Services. According to the American Dental Association, there is no one-size-fits-all when it comes to dental treatment. Some people are fine with going only once or twice a year, while others may need to go more often. But I think we can all agree that you do need to go. Unfortunately, fear can prevent some people from doing just that. Delmarva Life Sean Stryker stopped by Delmarva Dental Services to learn about sedation dentistry and how it's helping people with a fear of dentists keep their smiles looking great. Chances are, if you ask someone why they go to the dentist, they'll say to take care of their teeth. But by not going, you could be affecting way more than just your mouth. Anytime you have infections in your body, whether it be a gum disease or whether it be an abscess, you have an increased bacterial level in your bloodstream. And that bacteria affects other organs. It can affect your heart. It can affect uh, if you have artificial uh, joints and things like that. Those bacteria in your bloodstream from your mouth can seed into those areas. Knowing this, you would assume that everyone would just go to the dentist. But that's not the case. Dr. Joseph Harmon from Delmarva Dental Services says fear is one of the top reasons why people don't go. That's why they say they do everything they can to put your nerves at ease. We have an anti-anxiety questionnaire that we have online. And the main, really the main cause is lack of control, fear of not being in control. And then there's secondary things like the sound of drill is a big one, a needle is a big one. Uh, some people are upset because they've been lectured in the past and yelled out, so they're embarrassed. That questionnaire can help your dentist know what not to do. We ask particular issues that they're afraid of. There's, there's about 20 questions, specific things that we can key in on. So, uh, quite frankly, we don't do those things, <laughs> like lecture, you know, lecture the patient, or uh, sounds, we'll use headphones. A lot of patients are afraid of not being numb enough. And those people, you have to really ensure that you're using enough anesthesia and you reassure them that you're using enough anesthesia and you go slow because they're in the back of their mind, they're thinking, it's going to come, it's going to come, it's going to come, you know. So you have to, you treat everyone custom, individually. Another thing the questionnaire is used for is to rate your anxiety level. Actually, uh, we, can, we rank them from uh, 1 to 20, depending upon how they answer questions. And anywhere from 1 to 10, eh, that's pretty, they pretty much don't need anything. If you fall in this range, you can sit back, watch some TV, and let the dentist work. Once you pass a 10 ranking, that's when you might want to start thinking about a deeper way to ease your concerns. The first level would be um, a, a tranquilizer. Uh, maybe uh, somebody that was, say, 10, around 10, 11, 12. Maybe some Valium an hour before the appointment. And then we also have laughing gas uh, or nitrous oxide if they need a little bit more. So the closer you're getting to 15, then you may need a little bit of laughing gas as well as the Valium. And then when you're around 15, maybe you're going to need a, a short-acting sleeping pill. We'll put you not totally asleep, but semi-asleep.